Russia's Defence Ministry says that the release of NATO's satellite pictures apparently showing Russian troops in Ukraine will taint the organisation's image across the world. It also added it's pointless to comment on them. And here are the images that NATO has presented as its proof. The pictures apparently show Russian self-propelled artillery units moving in a convoy through Ukraine's territory. Other images allegedly show activity inside Russian areas that are adjacent to the Ukrainian border, something that NATO says is part of Russia's what it calls destabilizing strategy. Now let's get more analysis on this now from Daniel McAdams, who is the executive director at the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity. Thanks for joining us, Daniel. Um, we've just had a quick look at those satellite images. Um, to what extent do you think they can constitute that as proof? Well, I think these were released by the same, they were taken by the same company that the U.S. had used to release uh, its satellite information about MH17, the Malaysian air flight, uh, about the, um, the uh, existence of, uh, of guns by the rebels in Ukraine. And so I think it has uh, very dubious credibility. It's a private firm. I don't think it shows anything. I don't think what most people in the West understand is that everyone on both sides, with the exception of some Ukrainians having American weapons, but everyone is using Russian weapons. A, a, a line of, uh, of Russian tanks means nothing because we don't have the information to tell us where it came from. As to where Ru whether Russia has troops on its border, if it's inside its border, the, you know, there, what business is out of that? If we had unrest on the border with Mexico here in the U.S., you'd be sure we'd have a military presence there to make sure our borders were secure. If we look at what we saw in the UN Security Council meeting, Vitaly Chirkin could have a somewhat lonely figure, I would say, the other members sort of queuing up to, to have a go at Russia. Um, the media haven't been shy of jumping on board with this rhetoric of, of labelling it a, a Russian invasion. Moscow, though, has repeatedly insisted that this is not what is happening. Um, what do you think of this, given that there hasn't actually been any proof provided? Well, I think what happened is Ukraine has panicked. While they were in Minsk at this meeting, the rebels in the east launched a counteroffensive, uh, from all appearances, enormously successful counteroffensive that routed the Ukrainian forces. The Ukrainian government has been claiming nearly every single day of a new Russian incursion, a new Russian invasion. The only person who seems to be listening, had seemed to be listening, is, is uh, Anders Fogh Rasmussen, the NATO Secretary General, who continues to amplify these claims. I mean, literally, they are starting to sound so kooky, I'm starting to wonder when they're going to start chewing their ties, as uh, Saakashvili did, if you remember when he got himself in a pickle back in 2008. Frankly, it's just hard to take them seriously when they make these claims every single day, and there still is no, no evidence. As your reporter pointed out earlier, the UN itself has said, we cannot back up these claims, we cannot verify these claims of a Russian invasion. Now, we, we saw President Poroshenko uh, complaining about what he called an invasion, but within hours he was then offering to perform a joint patrol of the border, uh, hand in hand with Russia. People have found this somewhat confusing. Um, wh do you see any logic in this? Well, it's not confusing if you follow everything Poroshenko has said over the past couple of months. You know, he, I mean, honestly, he comes off as sounding somewhat unhinged. Uh, he's, he makes... Uh, strong statements, strong rhetoric. It changes overnight. Uh, it's it's difficult to understand. Maybe the pressure is getting to him, uh, but uh, you know, as you say, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, we're speaking to Daniel McAdams, executive director at the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity. Thank you.